Hi there, welcome back to the Garden of Epiphany, a woman's health and wellness oasis. I'm your host, Raven Epiphany, and I'm so glad you decided to join us for another video. So it is Faith Friday, and as usual, I am bringing you some scripture and insight from the Lord. Before we jump in, I want to recap. Last week, I shared a word called a season of restoration, where I share with you that God is restoring his remnant, Israel, in this season. If you want to know whether you are in that group and if you want to know more about what that means, I encourage you to go check out that video. I will link it above. And I also want to invite you to shop our new merch line. So I released a line entitled Amos 9, 13 through 15 season, which is aligned with the uh, word that God gave me about this season of restoration. And then I also uh, released some Garden of Epiphany merch. So if you want to, you know, shameless plug, rock the Garden of Epiphany out in the world, I definitely encourage you to do so and I thank you in advance for your purchase and lastly I want to invite you and ask you to like and share our videos as you watch them and to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and so let's go ahead and jump right in before I get into the actual prophetic word portion of today's video I just want to say like a couple of notes for both the people that uh, both the audience that this video is specifically for and people in general so anyone whether you're a parent or not you should be open to the possibility of receiving sound godly wisdom regardless of the source if God can speak through a donkey you never know what sources he may use to speak. He often uses the foolish things to confound the wise. The important thing is to always, always, always discern the spirit behind a statement and take it back to God, no matter where it came from. Even if it does come from your most trusted uh, sources, like your pastor, like in, for example, in this video, your child's teachers, uh, doctors, or even parents that you know who, you know, have raised, I don't know, 12 successful children, uh, adult children at this point. You always want to take a word, a piece of advice, anything back to the Lord for a confirmation, and you want to, you know, take it back to Him for the discerning of the Spirit behind it. And so you always want to ask God first is this from you god like is this word is whatever's being shared with me this advice whatever it is even if it's like secular advice you want to ask is this from you god does this align with your you know your words your ways and the second thing you want to ask is if it is from you god what parts are for me and how should I apply them to my life? Because sometimes God is speaking a thing. Sometimes God's truth, uh, God is saying something that is true. But when it is coming to like prophetic words or things that are based on seasons or, you know, that may only apply to specific groups, you have to ask God, how does this apply in my life specifically? Now, if it's coming out of the Bible, that applies to everybody. So we can't really, you know, alter that or pick and choose with that. But when it comes to like uh, what God is speaking in a given season, you want to ask him what parts of this are for me. Um, and how should I apply them to my life? And so let's go ahead and pray really quick before I get into the actual, you know, what God is saying, what he ha wants me to share. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another wonderful day. Thank you for everyone that is joining me here on this video, whether it be, you know, on Friday here with me or way later on the road. I pray that you um, soften their hearts and give them hearts of flesh not hearts of stone so they may hear what it is that you are speaking in this season i pray that if there's any correcting word that goes forth for them that uh they not feel condemned by it but they receive the, your love behind your correction and they you know can accurately apply it to their lives going forward and i also pray over their parenting journeys and over their children right now and i just pray that this is a blessing pray that it gives them more guidance as to how to partner with you in raising their children and i just pray over this video lord help me to say what it is that you gave me to say help me to say it in the ways that you gave me to say it help me not add to it or take away from it and also i pray that i my ears are open so that i may hear uh, hear from you if there's anything you want me to leave out or anything that you want me to say you know that you give me in a given moment in Jesus name amen so God sent me to inform some and to remind others uh, that concerning your children you must do four things there are four things he gave me four overarching umbrellas of things he gave me the first one is to protect their innocence the second one is to raise them intentionally the third one is to remember that your parenting relationship with your children should reflect God's fatherly relationship with us, his children. And lastly, you want to remember that they are children, but also don't muzzle their gifts. And so I will dig in and give you more insights to each of these four points, as well as, you know, scriptures that align with each. 
normally i would read like every single scripture but in this i have only highlighted certain scriptures that i will read and i really want to encourage each of you to go back and do a deeper study on your own uh with god and read some of the scriptures that i will just note here you can always find the list of scriptures that are shared in my blog because there are going to be quite a few today and so the first thing, protect their innocence. And so I'm sure many of you have noticed in today's time, the enemy is really working overtime to snatch away children's uh, innocence, like really working overtime. Um, there is a lot of perversion being showcased in settings that should be pure, things that are being promoted to children that should be pure, but have been perverted perverted and not just like sexual perversion but literally like a distortion of the way that god said that things should be it's literally like being marketed to children like candy evil is being presented as good and again this is emphasis on spaces that are supposed to be for children disney for example children's movies uh tiktok that's supposed to, you know uh social media that is supposed to be friendly to children is you know um marketing things that are not uh, not good as if they are good and so there's been an increase as I'm sure many people can see with even if you're not looking with spiritual eyes you can see it <laughs> that there's been an increase in demonic and witchcraft movies shows games toys etc marketed to children specifically it's been an increase overall but even more specifically an increase in these things that are marketed to children hypersexualized content for children evil spirits masked as cool creatures and things that they know children will be uh, attracted to and so what god is saying is that it, in this season it is more important than ever to be watchful and to discern spiritually in this season so being watchful means you know being watchful spiritually of course but also like watching over your children directly mind what your children watch on tv what they're searching online uh, what they're scrolling through on social media or even, you know, make the decision that your child's not going to be on social media. I mean, yeah, it's not a time to be lazy or complacent or hands off. And so there's been kind of at least what I've been noticing a lot of people that are kind of almost letting children, you know, run themselves and raise themselves in some ways where they're just like, you know, I don't want to invade their privacy too much. But you have to remember that you are charged with raising this little human who has never walked the earth before. Um, and so you have to be intentional about being watchful over the things that they're doing, they're seeing, etc., in order to protect their innocence. And so be in their business. Like, you know, you don't have to be, uh, um, do it in such a way that like makes them feel shameful or anything like that. But you want to be a hands-on parent. It is your job to protect and to direct them. And you can only do that if you are able to be watchful about what is going on in their lives. Also, I didn't put this here, but... Uh, be mindful of their friendships, their connections, who they're hanging out with, uh, what, you know, if you are sending your children to school physically, being mindful of what is being taught in their classrooms, watching, you know, what worksheets and, you know, homework and courses are coming home, etc. Be active in those things. Do not be overly trusting of other uh other settings for your children you don't have to be overly protective either like where you're like a helicopter parent per se but you want to be watchful you want to be mindful and lastly i have to say you better not be the one that's doing the perverting or strip stripping away of their innocence so um in matthew 6 it matthew 18 6 actually it says but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Now that sounds very, uh, you know, harsh and dramatic, but like literally if you are the one that's perverting your child's innocence, again, this doesn't just have to be sexually, this can be in many ways, um, you know, introducing them to alcohol or drugs early in life, introducing them to adult context, etc., uh, telling them that things are different than the way that God intended them to be, things like that. It is a serious thing because, uh, well, I'll get into the next part. Um, that whole section about protecting their innocence also involves protecting their imagination and their childlike ability to trust in God. And so this is kind of what connects to why it's such a dramatic uh, 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 consequence or a dramatic, um, what do you call it? Uh, 
analogy that God gave for the punishment for causing children to sin is because, you know, children are easily persuaded. So it's up to us to, uh, well, up to you guys who are parents and us, you know, one day when I have children to filter through what is persuading them and in what directions. And so in that same chapter, a couple verses before Matthew 18, one through five, it says, um, at the time the disciples came to Jesus saying, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. And so that is just really highlighting why it is important to protect their innocence, to protect, you know, their, as I've heard someone else call it, sanctified imagination. Um, and, you know, make sure that the things that they are being persuaded by in their childlike state are the things that align with God's will and way for their lives. And I just wanted to note that the cool parent is the one that is intentional in cultivating a little human to be who God created them to be. And so for some people, they may feel pressure, you know, because they see what other children's parents are allowing them to do. They see how, you know, children are attracted to certain parents because of the freedoms, etc. But you have to remember what your assignment at hand is. It, what your assignment at hand is. It is not necessarily to be liked by your children, although through the love of God that you share with them, through the parental love you share with them, ideally, you know, you will be liked by them, but there are gonna be times when they're not gonna like what you tell them to do. There are gonna be times when you have to be a bit more um, forward seeing than what they can what they can see or perceive with their little minds. You know, no matter whether they are, you know, four or, you know, 14, 15. And so uh, you want to make sure you are protecting their innocence. And so the next point is to raise them intentionally. So there's one scripture that we have all heard plenty of times, whether you're a Christian or not, I'm sure you've heard this scripture. It is Proverbs 22 and six. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And so you want to seek and implement godly wisdom instead of worldly standards in this because the technical thing about this verse is that uh, it says train them up in any way and they won't depart from that way it doesn't say only if you train them in the good way will they not depart from it if you you know train them up according to worldly standards train them up in things that are you know that god abhors that god that are not okay with god they will still not depart from that way when they are older. And so you want to make sure that you are seeking godly wisdom for how to raise them. And there are two parts to this. One is to raise them overall with godly principles, you know, like in general. The second thing is you want to train them based on their individual destinies and callings. And so to raise them with godly principles means your parent, your parenting relationship with them should reflect God's fatherly relationship with his children, as I said earlier. So there are a few things that you can take from the Bible as far as how God parents his children that you can implement in your parenting relationship with your children. And so one, God commends and blesses his children for their obedience. And so you can find this in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, where God outlines the blessings of obedience. Matthew 7 through of uh, 7, 11 and Psalm 37, 23. And those are verses that just show that um, God blesses his children for being obedient. He delights in their ways when they do, you know, his ways, um, etc. So you want to specifically reward obedience and well-doing, even if it is just with ver verbal acknowledgement. Two, you want to give them what they asked for within reason and at appropriate time. So not necessarily like being a yes parent where anything they ask for, you give them. But, you know, if they're being obedient, they're going for it, they're doing the good things that you have set forth in your house and doing the God things that God has said to do you should ultimately, you know, honor the things that they ask for within reason, you know, because you are still the parent um, and at appropriate times, you know, based off of their age, etc. And lastly, you want to let your children know that they are, that you are delighted when they follow your ways, which ideally should also be God's ways. So, you know, we'll get into that later, but essentially like your, your, the way you live should, you know, ideally instruct the way they should live and the way you live should be instructed by the way uh, God's ways. 
The second thing um, is that God guides, instructs, and prepares his children. So you can find this in Psalm 32, 8, Jeremiah 33 and 3, and Titus 3 and 1. And I want to say these are the scriptures that I pull, but I'm sure that with each of these, you can find so many more scriptures that align with each of these points too. So with this, you want to be proactive and intentional about teaching and instructing your children about what is good, bad, better, and best. You want to uh, you don't want to wait for them to get it wrong and then correct them. You ideally want to prepare and instruct them for things that have not yet occurred. Now, granted, there will be times when you just have to allow some when something just comes up before you've had a chance to instruct them in it or give them principles or values about a given thing. And yes, in that moment, you will then instruct, you know, it'll be a teachable moment for you to go ahead and instruct. But ideally, you should be intentional about teaching them things overall about life, about godly wisdom, about God's ways and how they can make good decisions overall before they even get to a given situation. And so the next thing is that God loves unconditionally, but does, does not accept our sins. He corrects his children when we are wrong or off course. And so this one is Hebrews 12, 6, and that one I actually will read because there's actually a good commentary um, near this one that um, I thought was very insightful and helpful. So that's Hebrews 12, 6, which says, oh, I did put a post in there. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. So basically, it is a part of God's love to correct uh, and chasten us as the word says. And so, um, you know, in today's world, we often have this distorted view of God and even a distorted view of love overall, where it's only the good things, where it's only, you know, the soft, fluffy, you know, uh, good, kind, whatever things. But a part of love is correction. A part of love is redirection. That's a part of ultimate love because at the end of the day, uh, your correction, God's correction and redirection is for our good. And then the same way, your correction and redirection of your children is for their good as well. And so there's a good commentary here um, in the Bible that says six types of discipline. God has placed upon parents the responsibility of disciplining their children. Now this doesn't say it here, but one thing um, that God showed me about discipline too is that it's not just punishment. Discipline literally in the sense of the word, like when you talk about self-discipline and you know, if you say this year, I want to be more disciplined, you're talking about having more structure. You're talking about having boundaries. You're talking about having guidelines for how to direct your life. And then on the other side of that is having those correct course things that you will implement when you step out. And so it's not just, you know, when they get something wrong, that's discipline. It's also, again, going back to being proactive, setting out those structures, standards, etc. Uh, for how they will be governed in general and how they can have discipline and not just be disciplined by you when they get something wrong. And so continuing here, here three words are used to describe the kinds of disciplines, kind of discipline we are to employ. Chastening, which means to instruct. Rebuked, which means to verbally reprove. And scourges, which means to flog which translates to sim uh, sensible physical discipline, not beating. The order in which these words appear is significant. All discipline must begin with instruction. So going back to the idea of you don't want to wait until they get it wrong to, you know, correct them. But even in that correction, the first thing you need to do is make sure they understand, you know, what why what they did was wrong and what the better choice would be not just this not just implementing you know punishment because they still may not understand what it means or what they need to do differently going forward so it must be again with instruction there are times when instruction or verbal rebuke is all a child needs to repent and obey responsible loving spanking however should be reserved for willful disobedience and rebellion and i want to point that out too because i know at least in the black community there are a lot of people that are overly excited almost to physically discipline their children uh in any situation but here it makes a strong distinction between not knowing and getting something wrong versus i already knew but i decided that i just wasn't going to do it and there are, there is definitely a difference between the two and i will say um 
give your children the benefit of the doubt don't always expect that if they do something wrong that you thought that they should have already known to get right don't automatically expect uh that they had bad intentions that they have purposeful rebellious intentions like uh in this last part you know will kind of be insight to you for how to do that it says parents are to seek the lord for each situation allowing him to show what is happening in the child's heart and which disciplinary action is appropriate and so again going back to the idea of not jumping to conclusions either way but always going back to the lord which we will talk about a little bit later in this video and so the last point of, you know, our relationships with God reflecting how your relationship with your children should be is that God is a God of order, not chaos. And so this scripture, you can find it in 1 Corinthians 14, 33. And this is just a reminder that uh, children need structure in a peaceful home with order. And so that means setting up systems and practices in your home on a regular basis going back to the other side of discipline so that there is order and not chaos in your home so that there is peace that children can dwell in and so the second half of uh doing things god's way and raising children intentionally is to seek god about their gifts and destiny and ask for specific instructions in guiding them in that way whatever that way is you want to seek specific instruction for each child so even if you have 12 children for each child you want to ask god who is this kid you put before me? Who are they going to be? What is it you want me to do with them? Uh, you know, how should I be raising them? What should I allow them to do and not allow them to do? What should I be training them up in specifically pertaining to their destiny and their spiritual gifts? And so there are many examples in the Bible where God sent specific instructions on how to prepare and raise children that had great callings on their lives. And so Samson's parents, Manoah and his wife, uh, in Judges 13, received specific instructions for how to raise Samson I, even from the womb there were certain things that Manoah's wife was told not to do like not to drink and there were some other things there Samuel's parents uh Elkanah and Hannah this is in first Samuel 1 so with this one Hannah's uh any instructions that Hannah got from God were not explicitly mentioned in the scriptures however if you look at how she uh moved with godly wisdom after Samuel was born and honored her promise to God of returning him back to God and devoting him his life to God afterwards we can infer that her wisdom was from God as far as how she, you know, decided to wean Samuel at home and then send him forth to do the work for God's kingdom afterwards and as to where to send him as well. So again, that's not explicitly in the text, but that is one that you can read the story and glean from her wisdom. And then John the Baptist's parents, Zacharias and Elizabeth's, and Elizabeth. In Luke 1, they received, first of all, uh, Elizabeth was barren before this. And so when the um, angel came to Zacharias and came to Elizabeth to let them know that they would have a child, they were given specific instructions about uh, how to raise a child as well as insight into the uh, calling that was on his life. He would be the one to usher in the Messiah, prepare the way for Jesus and so they you know were given those specific instructions like I encourage you guys to go back and read about it and see how specific some of these instructions were and then lastly and you know most gloriously were Jesus's parents his earthly parents Joseph and Mary you can find this in Luke 1 26 through 38 and Matthew 2 13 through 23 those are the main scriptures I pulled for some two specific instances where they were given instructions but I can always be sure that there are probably more references you can find for that. But there are instructions that they received when they heard about the word that, you know, they would be given this, um, this glorious son. And then there was an instruction one time when uh, Joseph was given insight as to how to protect his son from danger in the specific situation when Herod was trying to kill him. And so it's very important that you continue to go back to the Lord for insight about, you know, not only how to raise your children in general, but also for Rhema word on what to do in given situations, how to discipline, how to discipline them, how to protect them, how to, you know, prepare them, etc. The last point here is that you want to remember that they are children and but also not muzzle their gifts. And so on one hand, even if your child is mature, you want to remember that it is your responsibility to protect and direct them. So one, don't give them too many adult responsibilities or freedoms too soon. 
Uh, and you don't want to pressure them to know what you know automatically. Again, going back to the idea of actually actively instructing them and giving them, you know, the benefit of the doubt in those situations in between. You want to be mindful that it is their first time walking the earth and experiencing certain things. So don't expect them to already know how to act in certain situations when they have never, you know, been there, done that, etc. Especially at super young ages where they haven't even really grasped the full understanding of values and principles for which to make decisions. So uh, you want to exercise patience and the other fruits of the spirit in helping them to navigate life. And you can find the fruits of the spirit in Galatians 5, 22, 22 through 26, where it also instructs you to walk by the spirit. And on the flip side, you also want to recognize when the Holy Spirit is moving in them or speaking through them. You do not want to muzzle, mute, or dismiss their spiritual gifts or godly wisdom solely because they are young. Encourage them in those gifts. So let's say God uses your child prophetically to tell you something. You know, you do not want to dismiss them or... or uh, negate what they're saying just because they are a young child again going back to that idea of what i said even before getting into this word that you always want to test the spirit behind a thing you want to be careful not to quench the holy spirit that may be operating through your child and you also want to encourage them in those gifts and so i will read these scriptures for this one in first timothy 4 12 it says let no one despise your youth but be an example to the believers in word conduct in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And so this was to Timothy, who was a young preacher. And uh, I think it was Paul who was just encouraging him, uh, don't, you know, think, overthink your youth. Like continue to be an example of, you know, God's, be, continue to be God's example, essentially to the believers. Um, Jeremiah 1, 7 says, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth for you shall go to all whom, I'm sorry, but for you shall go to all to whom I send you and whatever I command you, you shall speak. And so Jeremiah was a prophet and he was young at the time that God called him. And so God was just saying like, don't say you're too young. Like I'm going to be the one that instructs you. I'm the one that's going to put the words in your mouth. I'm the one that's going to send you to the people that you are to speak to, etc. And so again, being mindful to discern that spirit that is operating through your child, because they could be a young Jeremiah. They could be a young Ezekiel. They could be a young Elijah. They could be a young uh, Deborah. They could be a young Hulda. Uh, who else? You know, you never know. Well, you don't never know until you ask who your child is that you are raising. And then the last one is Acts 2, 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And so again, just certified in this idea that age is not a you know deciding factor for god we even see in the old testament that some people became kings like at like seven years old 12 years old etc and so being mindful of that to steward your child's gifts well but again even going back to the first point though even if they are gifted even if they are holy spirit filled still allow them to be a child still remember that it's still your job to protect them to direct them to instruct them etc don't put too much responsibility on them to know what they shouldn't you know shouldn't know that you haven't taught them yet even if you know even if they are you know led by the spirit give them that grace of instruction and protection and so that is the end i have a couple of points just in conclusion so to recap the uh key points when it comes to raising your children protect their innocence raise them intentionally remember that your parenting relationship with them should reflect god's fatherly relationship with his children and remember that they are children but don't muzzle their gifts I encourage you to go back and study the scriptures that I shared here and do a deeper study overall on God's principles and guidance for raising children. Carve out regular time to meet with the Holy Spirit for guidance in raising your children specifically and stewarding their specific gifts. Go to him for every decision from small moments of correction to life altering decisions like their education, like, you know, where they will go to school, like their friendships, like, you know, bigger things in life. And lastly, I want to issue a warning to parents who may not be believers or who may not be committed to God. You are still responsible for the little human that God has placed in your care. It behooves you 
It behooves you to repair them for the purpose that God has placed on their lives, even if you neglected yours. So again, just because you are a parent who decided that you don't want to be committed to God, that you don't want to believe or whatever else, it does not mean that you aren't possibly raising a young Elijah, a young, you know, David, a young John the Baptist, not exactly because we only have one Jesus, but uh, it you, it doesn't mean you aren't still raising someone that God wants to use greatly for his kingdom. So it is still your responsibility to raise them accordingly. You are not exempt. And secondly, God wanted me to uh, just say to parents who have adult children who have heard this video and may feel that they failed it to raise their children in these ways. One, you want to repent for, you know, any of those shortcomings for not doing things his way, but don't feel ashamed of what you did not know. Don't feel, you know, shame or condemned about what you did not know. You can continue to pray for your adult children because God is our ultimate father. So if they choose to receive him, it is not too late for them to be redirected, to be reparented, to be realigned with their destiny in the ways that God has outlined for them to live. And so even if, you know, you feel like, oh, man, I did not do that when I was raising them, when they were, you know, in my care, continue to pray for them, continue that, you know, they come to God, continue that to pray that God has an encounter with them. And at the end of the day, God is all of our ultimate parent, even if you are their earthly parent. And so, you know, trust him to take care of them take care of them from here and so that's the end of this video i will go ahead and close us out in prayer i pray that this helped to uh either remind inform uh uh correct even uh parents who may need guidance or may have needed you know a reminder of how they're supposed to raise godly children and not just raise godly children but raise you know the next generation of those who will be working for god's kingdom even if you know at this age right now as a child they have work to do for the kingdom these are reminders from god as to how to make sure you are doing your part to get them where they need to be and so let's pray Heavenly Father, thank you again for another video. I pray that this was received on Hearts of Flesh. I pray that it was received on good soil, Lord. Um, I have planted the seed here or watered it for some others, Lord, and I pray that you give it the increase. I pray that you make this word come alive to people um, so that they may see and know how it is that you want them to apply things in their given life. I pray that as they go back and study your word and meet with you, that you would give them insight and instruction. You said that you would instruct us and guide us in the way that we should go. And so I pray that you would do that. Uh, you would instruct them and teach them in the ways that they should go so they know how to raise their children effectively for your kingdom in general as well as for the specific callings that you have given to each of their children. Lord, I pray that you would give them even just a little bit of insight into who you have called their children to be so that they may steward well over that child's life, over that child's gifts, over that child's calling, etc. And lastly, Lord, I want to pray for the innocence of our children, Lord. This is something that we need to continuously be in prayer for, Lord God. I pray that you would supernaturally guide, guard their eye gates and their ear gates and their spirits, Lord, from things that seek to pervert their innocence, seek to snatch away their innocence, Lord. And I pray that you would make their parents even more intentional about doing their part to protect uh, and guard their children's ear gates, eye gates, etc., Lord. And I just pray that pray over this new next generation of, you know, kingdom workers that you have here. I pray that you will continue to pour out your spirit upon them. You would give them your wisdom, your understanding. Uh, you would give them a uh, reverence for you, Lord, and a desire to do things your way. Give them a hunger to read your word for themselves, Lord God. And I pray also that you would just uh, lead and guide parents in uh, how they lead and guide uh, children into your kingdom, how they uh, set standards in the household, how they um, do Bible study and uh, worship and praise even in their homes, Lord God. Um, and I pray that you would continue to pour out your spirit on each household, continue to lead and guide them, protect them, and uh, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's the end of today's video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, if you know uh, you felt that God was speaking to you, please like and share this video with a parent that you know, or even a teacher. That was one thing too that I wanted to say. This video is for parents. You know, it was directed towards parents, but teachers and caregivers can definitely glean from the wisdom and knowledge that God shared here too, because you are a part of the village. You are a part of you know the group, the tribe that God you know has placed 
in these children's lives to help guide and you know to help guide them and protect them lead them instruct them etc and so send this to a teacher you know send this to a parent you know send this to a caregiver a, a babysitter anyone a nanny a tutor anybody uh, that you know can glean from this information and if you haven't already please subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss a video and god willing i will see you guys back here for wellness wednesday have a healthy and wholesome weekend